Armed with a wish list now, I'm going to survey my cast. What I'm trying to do is find a path of draw for my removable partial denture that fits the design that I would like and with the least amount of tooth adjustment uh, as possible. So we start out with our cast lined up to where the occlusal plane is relatively parallel to the floor and that's basically where I am and I'd like to look down the sides and say do I have about the same amount of tilt on the cast as far as uh, what the undercuts are looking like when I look down the crest of curvature on each side and I think that's what I do. The very first thing you're going to look at is the guide planes and you would like to try to equalize that triangular space of light that you see in this area on the guiding plate area of the tooth and you want to if you need to alter that you would tilt your cast to the left or to the right by loosening this uh, uh, adjustment back here it allows you to tilt your cast to the left or to the right a little bit and actually I, I kind of like what I have right now um, I have a little triangular space of light there and I have a little triangular space of light there but they're almost equal. If I start looking at retention the one that is the most important is retention and I would then have to adjust my guide planes a, a, a little bit more on those anterior teeth but try to tilt your calf to the left to the right where you equalize that space of light that you see between the um, uh, analyzing rod in the tooth. Now our guide plate is only going to come up to about right here which is just distal to that um, cusp tip. Same here, we're going to bring our guide plate up to about here. We're not going to come farther forward. If we had a real tilt on our teeth in that area, if we remove that area way out at this point then we're going to have to set a larger tooth in that area and the patient may not be happy with the size of tooth. All right, we said we wanted to have a 0.01 undercut either on the mesiofacial of our canines. And I don't know if you can see right here, but there is a little triangular space of light in here. And that says I have an undercut, and I would venture a guess that it's at least an 01 undercut. And I'm going to look on my premolar also, and I have a little triangular space of light on that tooth also. Now I can increase those undercuts by tilting my cast forward. I can decrease those undercuts by tilting my cast to the posterior, trying at the same time not to change my left and right orientation. So I like, I have no one undercut here, I have no one undercut here. I'm wide open as to which one of those teeth I choose. If I turn my cast around, I have a 0.01 undercut. If you can see again the triangular space of light in there on the pre on the canine, and I have one on my premolar also. On we're looking at the mesial buccal surfaces because we said we want that arm to come toward the facial. It's more aesthetic for one thing. If you come backward, it's really ugly. If you come forward, it's not as, but it also satisfies our rule that we want retention close to, in front of, or very close to this fulcrum line, and then we want another one in the posterior area. So I am going to look on my facial surfaces of my molars, and I don't have any undercut there, and, and I would suspect that I wouldn't have a lot of undercut because the mandibular molars tend to lean toward the lingual. I don't have one there. But if I look on the distolingual of my molar, I have one, I have a triangular space of light right there. And if I look over on the other side of the arch, I don't have much of an undercut on the buccal surfaces of either of these molars. But if I look on the lingual, I have a little triangular space of light on my first molar 
and I have an even bigger triangular space of light on my second molar. So I think what I would be tending to use then for my design would be, I have two options in the anterior, I can class my canines or I can class my first premolars. I kind of like the idea of the first premolar because it's a little more aesthetic than the uh, canines. So I'm going to choose to do it that way. And I had a buckle and a buckle undercut. So if I have a buckle and a buckle, I have satisfied my uh, need for uh, balanced retention. And these posterior molars can be either side. I can have one on the buckle, one on the lingual, if I wish, or two on the lingual. I think it would be more balanced if I used the two on the lingual here. But I have satisfied um, balanced retention. The only thing I cannot have is buckle and buckle and lingual and lingual or my partial denture would want to dislodge itself in this direction. So let's go ahead and I like what I see. Um, I'm going to check just to make sure that I have those .01 undercuts so I'll put my .01 undercut gauge in and remember when I'm looking for undercuts I place my rod next to and in contact with the tooth and I pull up that rod until that horizontal lip touches the tooth and that is the point of .01 undercut if I have the 01 undercut gauge in here and with that I'm going to make a little scratch on my tooth and I'm going to mark that with my red pencil want to see a little bit of a mark and I'm going to mark it with my pencil. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this premolar. I'm going to bring it down to the gingival area. I'm going to pull it up to where it touches the tooth and if you kind of twirl it, it'll make a little mark on your tooth and you can then place an 01 undercut mark on your tooth. So I have one marked on each side here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark my 01 undercut on the canine, just just in case. I, I put my rod down to the gingival level, pull it up to where the horizontal aspect is touching, twirl it a little bit, and mark my 01 undercut right there, and put a 01 mark on there. Now, I do not want to change the orientation of my um, uh, table here when I'm looking at all of these. They have to all be at the same orientation. Alright, I come over to this canine. I bring the rod in contact. The lip is down at the gingiva. I pull that lip up until it's touching and the rod is touching. Do a little twirl action right here and mark the 01 undercut on my canine. Come on back to my first premolar. Pull it up. Make a little mark on my tooth, mark it on that position, and then I'm going to go back. And I think that because I have the option, I can use either one of these teeth. Since I have a first molar over here, we're not replacing this action back here, and I'm going to, I think it would be a little more symmetrical if I put my O1 undercut and I do my direct retainer on this tooth right here. Kind of low, close to the gingiva, but um, it makes it more symmetrical. All right, I think I'm ready to survey my cat. I insert my lead using the lead sheath with a little bit of the lead sticking out the bottom. This protects the lead from breaking as you're surveying, and you place it in here. You want to be careful when you tighten this clamp on the surveyor that you are not right on the lead or you can break it just by tightening it too much. So I'm going to survey all posterior teeth and any teeth next to the edentulous area, but really that's one rule from uh, the, the uh, textbook. But I like to survey everything. I think that that gives us a better idea. We're totally covered as far as um, anything we might want to do if we just survey the entire arch. 
Now you're placing the lead down at the level of the gingiva and you're allowing the side of the lead to make the marks. All right? Place the lead down at the level of the gingiva so you mark on the gingiva, big deal. Um, but you want the side of the lead to be touching the tooth because then it is truly marking the height of contour. If you put the lead up here, you're marking the height of contour, and it's not necessarily the height of contour of the tooth. So the lead should be at the gingival and just surround and go around those teeth, all of them. Let the side of the lead mark the teeth. So I've done one side, and I like the back surface to be marked also, so I'm starting back here, coming around, and if these teeth lean to the gingival, you know, that that um, survey line will very likely almost be at the gingival level. It's looking like we have some decent survey lines. Again, let the side of the lead mark your tooth. So you have to twirl this little thing a bit while you're marking. Let it be down at the gingival level so that the side is marking the height of contour of the tooth. Every cast that we have may survey a little differently because they're old molds and they tend to shrink over time. So I have the three, the both sides um, marked. Okay. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put my 03 undercut gauge in, the one with three notches. And it has a nice lip that sticks out, and I need to tripod my cast. Now, without moving this table, anterior, posterior, left and right, I want it to be solid on, on the platform. I want to find that I can have three places widely spaced from one another. It makes it easier to get it reorient your cast if they're widely spaced from one, an uh, one another. That's a little too high. And I'm going to make three little notches on my cast with the edge of that 01 undercut gauge, or 03 undercut gauge. And I'm going to place a red mark on it like this. I'm going to come back here, mark, mark my cast, place about a 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four line there, and I'm going to come back here. Again, not moving, staying with the cast in position on the platform. The table does not move. The analyzing rod, the rod does not move up and down while you're doing this or you lose your orientation. Then I'm going to circle all of those marks with a blue circle. And that leaves me no doubt, no matter what I do on this cast, if I get some other marks, then I can always find that tripod mark. So now I'm armed with the idea that I'm going to put direct retainers here, I'm going to put direct retainers here, and I have a tentative design set up for me. I'm going to replace the anteriors with base attachment. On the mandibular, I like base attachment because it can be relined, but sometimes if you have extreme undercuts, you might use facings, but facings cannot be relined and base attachment can. The wrap can be used. It's difficult to reline, but it is more possible than uh, facing, which has an undersurface that's metal. All right, we'll now go toward drawing our tentative design on a piece of paper. 